Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, I'm going to be covering a question that comes up probably three to six times a week. Um, I just got done with this client's spindle cable, and the question that comes up most is, how do you build your stress release for your cables? I prefer to have a what looks like a molded on stress relief. A lot of guys don't know how to attain this. What you see here on this client's cable, which I just got done with, is a 20 foot DS flexion. He's got the large HY connector. We've got a piece of double wall heat shrink. You can see the seam right here that comes all the way up, gets inserted inside the connector, and then is shrunk. And then over that comes another piece of double wall heat shrink, the same diameter, and it laminates it and then is shrunk. Why do I do that? I get asked that all the time. This is extremely durable. Case in point, this silicone boot usually comes installed inside a large HY connector. Many of you have seen this. This is the new thing that's coming from overseas that we see being done. Why are they doing this? This is not at all adequate for stress relief. It's much too soft. And I'm gonna tell you why they are doing it is because they feel that many of you may not have experience building cables. So what ends up happening is a guy cuts the cable all the way back and he has all of his leads coming back into this portion of the silicone boot and this is supposed to act as an insulator along with the stress relief. Guys, this is completely inadequate, okay? Double wall heat shrink. This is my double wall heat shrink. This is what comes with all of my spindle cable kits. First of all, it has adhesive inside which prevents moisture and it also bonds when actually heat is provided and this is shrunk. What does that mean? Well, that means when you take your cable and you insert this, okay, it's gonna lock it in place once it's shrunk, okay? The other thing is, is that once you shrink this, naturally its diameter is going to shrink. Here's another piece of double wall heat shrink. Once this diameter is shrunk, you can sl simply slide it as a sleeve, the larger piece, over it and create your stress relief. So again, these are things to really keep in mind about what you're actually working with. Now you can see the thickness of this, and I'm gonna show you the thickness of this compared to single wall heat shrink. And if you look, look at how thin this is. Now this does not have adhesive. It's not required to. This is double wall. And many of you, when you've never felt double wall heat shrink, you realize really quick, this is some very, very strong stuff. Um, when you double it, it's ridiculously strong. And I mean, uh, to the point, like I said, it becomes more like a plastic. This is super strong on this end. Now, I get guys that ask, you know, how low should I come with this? Meaning, how low should I come with a stress relief? Well, I like to stay about probably 8 to 10 inches back from the cable. And the main reason I do that, and when I say the cable, I mean the connector end. The main reason I do that is because you do not want flexing near the, the actual end of the connector. And the main reason you don't, you're gonna put tension on your conductors. What you wanna do is make it so that you are providing you know, a cable long enough for your machine that you're not going to be flexing at this end. This is simply where the cable comes up and you can see you've got a rigid piece here and a much more rigid piece as we get closer to the connector. Once again, this is inserted inside the connector and that's what gives me my molded on look. If you look in there, you can see this is clean. How is it clean? Well, let's cover it. Okay, I'm going to go with the smaller piece. Here's a piece of DS flexion. Let's simulate this as your cable, okay? How do I achieve that? I achieve that through lots of practice. I take a heat gun and I go real slow and I'll just come up and you can see I got a little melt there. Now I'm going to come over here and I do the same thing. Same thing. Done. Now you notice I didn't shrink it all the way. And if you do it right, and you come back far enough, let me bring this back a little more. See, I apply the heat and pull it right away. And what you can do is slide this right up into your butted connector and come right in. And that allows you then to create that seal and then actually go inside your connector sealing everything. Okay? This is what guys don't understand when it comes to building these kind of cables and they go, you know, it looks easy. You know, they'll see it assembled and they think that they understand all these little tricks. And these little tricks come from years of practice. 
So when do you use single wall heat shrink? You use single wall heat shrink on like the conductor end where we actually have our ring connectors. And the main reason you can use that is I'm creating a boot. You can see I get asked this too. Why don't you shrink it all the way up? Because then you have no flexibility. The boot keeps your leads nice. And the idea is that this is flexible. Okay. Many of you don't know that inside the cable, this silicone lead is longer. I cut it longer than these leads right here. And the main reason I do is that if this cable bends, it's not putting tension on his ground. Okay, so the silicone lead is to the shield drain. When he bends this cable, of course, as you bend it, those conductors are moving constantly. This is what's considered to be a live cable. And therefore, we don't want ever, ever any pulling to be done on this ground lead. Once this silicone lead is soldered to that ring connector, we want to make sure that this ground, which is actually getting attached to the VFD's ground, is not going to have tension if this cable is bent. So like I said, this might look simple. It looks like, you know, once it's assembled, it's clean, it's done, but there's a lot to know here. And looking at this and understanding it is something that, again, I understand it's gonna generate a lot of questions. My overall advice to you, and I've said this in many videos in the past, if you're uncertain of what you're building, this is a three-phase cable. And again, for my novice guys out there, that means you're providing three leads at 110 volts per lead going to your spindle. This can easily start a fire. If you're uncertain of what you're doing, do it right, save your money, have someone do it, if not me, and have them do it right, okay? These cables must be done correctly. This particular cable is going to a client who was running um, 18 gauge cable go as a spindle cable. 18 gauge cable, I've said this in many videos prior, is not the gauge wire to use for spindle cables. You want 16 gauge cable. It has to be that gauge to support the amount of amps. Okay, aside from the fact that China wants you to think it's much easier to work with, it's easier to terminate, it's not the correct cable for the application. 16 gauge is what you want to use. I prefer all of my <coughs> spindle cables to be DS flexion because they're ultra flex. The only clients that should be using uh, normal cable is the ones that understand they need a large cable chain or they're going to hang their cable outside the cable chain and intercept. But you can see, once again, how clean this is. Okay? Very, very clean and very concise as far as rigid. This is very solid. And if you look at this, it's kind of funny, if you look at this in comparison, this part of the boot, because they have this part going inside the connector, if you look at this, you can see how thick this is compared to this boot, and it is extremely rigid. So keep that in mind. All of my kits that come bundled with uh, the DIY kits I'm talking about, my spindle cables, they all come with enough heat shrink for you to do this yourself. The question is, is the practice. I can sell you the kit, doesn't mean you have my skills. Why? Because I'm doing it every day. Most of you are going to your nine to five, I'm doing this every day. So keep that in mind, you know? I mean, and that's something that comes up a lot. You know, you, you make it look easy and it's like, well, I do it all the time. You know, I'm sure you make your job look easy as well. So it's something to keep in mind, you know, when you're, when you're looking at something like this, you wanna make sure you take your time, do it right, and most of all, do it safe. So again, I hope that this video has been helpful. Thank you all for support. Take care.